All right, welcome back. This is our third lesson on simplifying polynomial expressions. And remember that the word simplify does not mean to make simple. Okay, simplify means to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay, so again, we are focusing right now on just multiplication and division. Remember, if I say that something applies to multiplication, that means that it also applies to division, because multiplication, division, same thing. Now, we're looking at laws of exponents, okay, and again, laws of exponents refer to the operation multiplication, okay, multiplication, and you can star this, okay, and we're looking at... First, x squared multiplied by x to the third power. Remember, two x's multiplied by three more x's. We are not adding. Okay, we are counting the number of times that we multiplied. How do we count the number of times we multiplied? By adding the exponents in our head. So the trick, the trick is to add the exponents. Okay, if the bases match, two x's times three more x's, we add the exponents, we get x to the fifth. But in your, your, you're keeping in mind that we're not actually adding, but rather counting the number of times that we multiply. The trick is to add the exponents. So again, adding exponents is a method of counting the number of times in which we did what? Counting the number of times in which we multiplied. Remember, we are just dealing with multiplication laws. Now, x to the fifth divided by x squared. Uh, remember, if we multiply, we add the exponents. When the bases match, if the bases match and we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. 5 minus 2 gives x to the third. But rather, think of this instead of subtraction. I like students to think of this as 5x's divided by 2x's. We can cancel 2x's with 2x's, leaving how many x's? 3x's on top. Okay, so we get x cubed. Now, x squared to the third power, when we have power of power, we multiply the exponents and get x to the 6. 2 times 3 gives 6. Why? Because this is x squared multiplied by x squared multiplied by x squared. Or 2x's times 2 more x's times 2 more x's is a, a total of 6x's multiplied together. Instead of adding 2 3 times, it's faster to simply multiply. And lastly, so we have addition of exponents, subtraction of exponents, multiplication of exponents. What is missing? Uh, what is missing is division of exponents. Okay, reminding you. Fancy division. We remember that we learned in elementary school six divided by two is three, but we're not. This is elementary school division. Rather, we're looking in high school at high school or fancy division is square root. Fancy division symbol is what you were told square root. Square root of sixteen you were told is four, but we're going to look at this as division. Division of what? Division of the exponent, and that is coming soon. Now. Uh, on to the problem. So finishing the sheet on multiplication rules. We're looking at problem number on the 6-1 practice sheet, problem number 13. Problem number 13 says negative quantity 4w to the negative third power, z to the negative fifth power, multiplied by 8w to the second power. Now, do we have exponents on the outside of parentheses? Yes. We have an exponent on the outside of the parentheses here. Remember, exponents distribute over multiplication, so we're squaring both the 8 and the w. Does the exponent affect anything in the first set of parentheses? No, the exponent just affects the 8 and the w. And so we're going to square the 8 and square the w, which means what? This means, well, simply 8w quantity squared means 8w times 8w. We can just say 8 times 8 is what, 64, w times w is w squared, so we're squaring the 8, 8 times 8 is what, 64, square the w, we get w squared. Now, here the negative is separate from the 4, but since it's all multiplication, we don't see any addition, we can just connect this as what, negative 4, still thinking in our mind that the negative is separate, w to the negative third, z to the negative fifth, and now, there are no more exponents on the outside, so we're done with the multiplication rule. Okay, We're just looking at addition of exponents now. So let's start with the numbers. Negative 4 times 64, I'll help you out here, is negative 256. W to the negative third times W squared, we are adding the exponents. <clears throat> Remember, when the bases match, X matches X, we add the exponents. Okay, 2X's times 3 more X's is 5X's. If we have negative exponents, same thing, negative 3 plus 2. Okay, signs are opposite. We actually subtract in our head. 3 minus 2 is 1. Take the sign larger, which is negative 1. So we get w to the negative 1 power. 
and z to the negative fifth has nothing to come with, so we write z to the negative fifth. And is this our final answer? No. Remember that simplify comes with special rules. Remember simplify. Okay, so when we are simplifying, we have special what? Rules. And these rules say what? Well, the first rule we're going to look at is no negative exponents in final answer. Okay, so right now this is the only rule that we've added onto this. No negative exponents in final answer. Okay. Now, Looking here, do we have negative exponents? Yes, negative 1 and negative 5 are negative exponents. This means move these terms to the denominator. Now, is the negative in front of the 256 a negative exponent? No, that is talked about in the previous video. So negative 256 stays. So we end up with what? Move these two variables where? Move these two variables to the bottom. The negative 256 stays on top. This is a negative number. Negative 256 and move the w to the negative 1 to the bottom. We get w to the positive 1. Do we write the 1? No, we just write w. z to the negative fifth moves to the bottom, becomes z to the what? Positive 5. Remember, when we move it from top to bottom, the exponent changes sum. All right, now, next problem, number 14. Number 14 is m to the fourth, very important problem, n to the sixth. All this to the fourth power multiplied by m to the third, n squared, p to the fifth power, all this to the 6. Now question, do we have exponents on the outside of parentheses? Yes. So we have a case of power of power, or pow yeah, power of power, so we simply multiply the exponents here. So we're going to start with multiplication, uh, m to the 4th to the 4th. When we have power of power, we multiply. 4 times 4 gives m to the 16th power. Again, multiply. 4 times 6 gives n to the 24th power. Now. Again, multiply the exponents. If you're having trouble with this, what does m to the third to the sixth power mean? It means m to the third multiplied by m to the third multiplied by m to the third six times. m to the third, m to the third, m to the third. Do you want to add three six times, or would it be faster to simply multiply the six times the three? It would be faster to multiply. So instead, again, when we have power, power, we multiply. 3 times 6 gives 18, so we get m to the 18th power. Again, multiply 2 times 6 gives n to the 12th. And 5 times 6 gives p to the 30th. Now, are we done multiplying exponents? Yes. Now we're using this property over here. When the bases match, what do we do with the exponents? We add 2x's times 3 more x's gives 5. So we're looking here. 16 m's multiplied by 18 more m's. We add 16 plus 18 and get 34 m's multiplied together. Now, 24 n's multiplied by 12 more n's. Remember, when the bases match, n matches n, we add the exponents. 24 plus 12 gives n to the what? 36th. And we finally have p to the 30th sitting on the end. And this is your final answer. Number 16. We're going to skip 15 and go to 16. Okay? Number 16 says 2 x to the third, y squared, all over uh, negative x squared, y to the fifth, all this to the negative 2 power. Now, we see an exponent on the outside of parentheses. Question, does the exponent affect everything inside the parentheses? Yes. Now, we are going to deal with this outer exponent last. I want you to write last. Now. We're going to take care of what's on the inside first. Okay, So we're going to start by canceling what's on the inside. Now, we have a negative. Notice a negative on the bottom. This is not a negative exponent. This represents negative 1. It's a number like 2. Okay, Again, negatives can float. Okay, Different from negative exponents, reminding you negative 8 is a negative number. Does negative 8 equal 1 over 8? No, this is completely false. Okay, this is completely false. However, 8 to the negative 1 power does mean move it. So we end up moving it where? Move it to the denominator, we get 1 over 8. So there's a difference between negative exponent and negative value. Okay, negative 8 is a negative number that lies to the left of 0 on the number line. 8 to the negative 1 is a positive number. It's the number 1 8, and it lies to the right of 0 on the number line. Okay, now, 
So in this case, you see negative 1. I just want you to let this float to the top. So we're going to put negative on top with the 2. There's nothing for the 2 to cancel with. Now go to your x's. Do you see that 2x's and 3x's? 2x's can cancel with what? 2x's can cancel with 3x's, leaving how many x's? Hopefully you say 1x on top. If you're struggling with this, watch the last video where it's diagrammed. 2y's cancel with 5y's, leaving how many y's? Well, hopefully you say 3y's on the bottom. Okay, so we have 1x on top, and we have 3y's on the bottom, and all of this is taken to the negative 2 power. Now, have we dealt with what's on the inside? Yes. Now we will deal with the outer exponent. But before we do this, I want to remind you guys of a couple other things with laws of exponents. Now, if I write xy quantity squared, do exponents distribute over the operation multiplication? Okay, do we square the x? Do we square the x and square the y? Yes, because this is what? This means xy times xy, which is equal to what? x squared, y squared. So we can simply just square the x and square the y. So instead of writing this out, we can say, well, exponents distributed over multiplication, we get x squared, y squared. Question, if I give you x over y, x over here, let me write it over here x over y, quantity squared. Can we square the x and square the y? Yes, because exponents distribute over division just like they distribute over multiplication. We get x squared over what? x squared over y squared. To show you, x over y squared means x over y times x over y, which is what? x squared over y squared. So you can see it. Now, what do we do when we have negative exponents on the outside? What if we have here? <coughs> what if we have x over y to the negative 2 power? So here we uh, let me write it here. x over y to the negative 2 power. Okay, first off, we agree that exponents distribute over division. So we can square the x and square the y and get x squared over y squared. So can we write this as x to the negative 2? over y to the negative 2? Yes. Now, we cannot have negative exponents in our final answer, so we move the y to the negative 2 where? We move this to the top, and we take the x to the negative 2 and move it where? To the bottom. So we're going to get the y to the negative 2 on top, we get y to the positive 2 over, move x to the negative 2 to the bottom, we get x squared on the bottom. My question is, this is, this is, well, not question, I'm going to tell you this is faster. Okay, so does this also work is my question, but I'm going to tell you, yes, it works, and it is faster. So instead, instead of getting x to the negative 2 and y to the negative 2, okay, instead of doing this and getting x to the negative 2, y to 2, and then flipping it, rather, flip it first. If you have a negative exponent on the outside, flip it first, we get what? y over x, and change the sign of the outer exponent to positive 2. Notice, when you flip it, Nothing on the inside changes, but the outer exponent changes from negative to positive. Now square. So we square the y, square the x, we get what? y squared over x squared. So this is faster. I want you to flip first. So when dealing with a negative exponent on the outside, what do I want you to say? First, what? Flip it, and when you flip it, nothing on the inside changes. y over x, and the outer exponent changes from, that's the only thing that changes, the outer exponent changes from negative 2 to positive 2. Now square the y, square the x, we get y squared over what? x squared. Now, up here, same thing. Since we have a negative exponent on the outside, I want you to flip the, what's on the inside, but don't change anything on the inside. So the y to the third moves to the top, and we move the negative 2x to the bottom. So we get negative 2x on the bottom. We're changing the outer exponent from negative 2 to what? Positive 2. And now, square everything inside. So since we're squaring y cubed, Notice nothing on the inside changed. We just flipped it, except the outer exponent changed from negative 2 to positive 2. Now square everything on the inside. Square the y cubed. Notice we have what? Power of power. Cubing x squared, we multiply the exponents. Since we're taking power of power, okay, we're going to multiply the exponents and get what? I'm just going to write it down here. Square the y cubed. Multiply, we get y to the 6th. Square. Are we squaring the negative? Yes. Are we squaring the 2? Yes. And are we squaring the x? Yes. Hopefully you see three things in the denominator. Start with the negative 1. Okay, so do we square negative 1? Yes. What is negative 1? Negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we get a positive 1. Do we have to write the positive 1? No. Okay, so we don't write positive 1. Square the 2. Okay, so square the 2, we get what? 2 times 2 is 4. 
Another way to think of this, are we squaring the negative 2, the whole thing? Yes. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives what? Positive 4. So that's another way to think of it. We get positive 4. Now square the x. We get x squared. And this is your final answer. Now, next and last question, number 17. Okay, number 17 says 3x to the negative 2 power, y to the third, multiplied by 5xy to the negative 8 over x to the negative third power to the fourth power is y to the negative 2. Now, first we're going to start with combining what's on top. Notice there are no exponents on the outside of the parentheses, so we are not multiplying. Okay. Notice we just have matching bases, so we're going to add our exponents. Start with our numbers. 3 times 5 gives 15. x to the negative 2 times x to the first. I'm going to put the 1 here so you can see it. Negative 2 plus 1 gives negative 1, so we get x to the negative 1 power. Remember, we're adding exponents. y to the third, y to the negative 8, add them. 3 plus negative 8 gives y to the negative fifth over... And now, what are we doing with the exponents here when we have power of power? When we have power of power, what are we doing? We are multiplying. So we're going to do negative 3 times 4 and get x to the negative 12. And y to the what? y to the negative 2. Now, since we have negative exponents, remember, no negative exponents in the final answer. So we have to move things that have negative exponents. We're going to start with one thing at a time. Does the 15 move? No. The 15 has a positive 1 exponent, although it's not written, so leave the 15 alone. Does the x to the negative 1 move? Yes. x to the negative 1 moves to the bottom becomes x to the positive 1. Do we have to write the positive 1? No. Okay, so just x. y to the negative 5 moves to the bottom, we get y to the positive 5. x to the negative 12 moves to the top becomes x to the positive 12. And y to the negative 2 moves to the top becoming y to the positive 2. Now, We've made our exponents positive, now cancel. Okay, so we always cancel after we make exponents positive. So we're going to cancel 1x with 12x's, leaving how many x's? Hopefully you say this is a concept of subtraction. 12 minus 1 gives 11, so we get 11x's left on top. And cancel 2y's with 5y's. If you're still having a hard time seeing this, let me write it. y squared over y to the fifth, I'm showing you. This is y times y over what? y times y times y times y times y. 2 y's over 5 y's, we cancel 2 with 2, we're left with how many? We're left with 3 on the bottom. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. If we cancel 2 y's with 5 y's, we're left with how many? We're left with 3 y's on the bottom. So we have y cubed on the bottom. Our final answer is 15 x to the 11th over y to the 3rd. And two more problems. So these problems that I'm going to do now are like number 43 and number 44 in your textbook on page 338. These problems tend to give students a little bit of difficulty and they're like your quiz questions. So the quiz questions will be a lot like this. So I'm going to write like, this question is like number 43 on page 338 okay, of your textbook. Now, the problem is written as 3x to the negative third power y to the 7, all over x, y to the negative 2, all this to the negative 2 power. Now, do we have an exponent on the outside of parentheses? Yes. Circle this and write last. We will deal with the outer exponent last. Always start with what's on the inside first. Now, question. Is there a number on the bottom that the 3 can cancel with? No. So I want you to just write the 3. Now, also, we have negative exponents on the inside. Remember, we're dealing with what's on the inside first. We're not worried about this outer exponent. So take care of your negative exponents. That means get rid of them. No negative exponents in final answer. So whenever you see negative exponents, get rid of them immediately unless they're out here, Okay, unless it's the exponent on the outside. So x to the negative third moves to the bottom. So I cross them out as I go. Cross the 3 out. x to the negative third moves to the bottom becomes x to the positive 3. Cross it out. Does y to the 7th move, or does y to the 7th stay? Hopefully you say y to the 7th stays, so leave it alone, cross it out. Okay, x to the 1st, okay, x to the 1st stays. Okay, this is a positive exponent, we don't move it. So we have x to the 1st on the bottom, so just put x, cross it out, and y to the negative 2 moves where? To the top, so we get y squared on top, and put all of this to the negative 2 power. Okay, this does not disappear, it's still there. 
Now, this is equal to, okay, can we combine, or I should say this first, do we cancel? No, we don't cancel because all of our y's are on top and all of our x's are on the bottom. Just combine them. Now, when the bases match, what do we do with the exponents? When we have x matching x, we add the exponents. Okay, so we're looking at 7y's times 2 more y's gives what? 3y to the ninth power. 7 plus 2 is 9. Now, x to the third times x to the first. Notice the 1 is not written. This is 3x's times 1 more x gives 4x's multiplied together. All of this to the negative 2 power. Now, the question is, have we dealt with what's on the inside? Yes. Now what I want you to do is deal with the outer exponent. Remember, if the outer exponent is negative, what do we do first? We flip the fraction first and change the outer exponent to positive. Notice when we flip it, nothing changes. Okay? Nothing changes. So we're just going to put what's on the bottom on the top and what's on the top on the bottom. So we have what? x to the negative fourth moves to the top. We have x to the positive four on top. And 3y to the ninth moves to the bottom. And all of this to what? The positive two power. Notice after we flip it, we change the exponent from negative to positive. Now square everything inside. Are we squaring the x to the fourth? Yes. Squaring the three? Yes. Squaring the y to the ninth? Yes. Notice if we square x to the fourth, we have what? Power of power, so we multiply. x to the fourth squared, we multiply four times two, get x to the eighth over square the three. Squaring three does not mean six. This means what? Three times three, which is nine. And now square the y to the ninth. If we square y to the ninth, remember, we are multiplying exponents. 2 times 9 gets y to the 18th power. 2 times 9. Okay, So we get a final answer of x to the 8th over 9y to the 18th. Lastly, this is like number 44 on same page. Like number 44, same page. Okay, page 338. 6a to the negative first power, b to the third power, over 36 a to the seventh, b to the ninth. All this to the what? All this to the negative third power. Remember we deal with what? We deal with outer exponent last. We start with what's on the inside. That means cancel what's on the inside. But before you can cancel, you have to get rid of what? Negative exponents. Okay, so we're going to move our negative exponents immediately. So we have six. Okay, this is done. And a to the negative 1 moves where? a to the negative 1 moves to the bottom. Okay, let's go ahead and put our numbers first. Put our 36. Okay, a to the negative 1 moves to the bottom. We have an a. Okay, cross it out. Cross the 36 out. We're done with the numbers. a to the negative 1 moves becomes a. b to the third stays. a to the seventh stays. Okay, a to the seventh because the exponent is positive stays. b to the ninth what? b to the ninth stays. Okay, now. All this to the what? Negative third power. Now that we've made exponents positive, go ahead and cancel. Can we cancel 6 with 36? Yes. Divide them each by 6. 6 divided by 6 is what? 6 divided by 6 is a 1. Do we have to write the 1? No. We only have to write the 1 if everything in the numerator is gone. Okay. For instance, for instance, if you have x uh, over x squared y. If you cancel the x with the x squared and you get an x on the bottom, Notice, nothing is left on top. If nothing's left on top, you put a 1, and you get an x, y on the bottom. <clears throat> the only time we put a 1 is if there's nothing left in the numerator, or vice versa, nothing left in the denominator. 6 cancel with 36, divide them each by 6, we get a 1. We don't write the 1 because we're going to have, uh, well, actually, we will write the 1. Yeah, let's see what happens here. 6 cancel with 36, uh, 6 divided by 6 is 1. We don't write the 1. 36 divided by 6 is 6. Now we put the 6 in the denominator. Yeah, this will be a case where we have nothing left in the numerator. Now, let's deal with our a terms. Notice our a terms are both on the bottom. Go ahead and just combine these. If the bases match, we add. 1 plus 7 gives a to the 8th, okay, adding exponents. And then 3 b's cancel with 9 b's, leaving how many b's? Well, hopefully you say there are 6 b's left where? 6 b's left on the bottom. So we have b to the 6th on the bottom. Now, okay, so I wasn't even paying attention. Yes, this is a case where nothing is left on top. Okay, so if nothing's left on top, what do we put this over? We put what? A 1. So the only time you will put a 1 is if everything cancels out. And what's on the outside? We still have a negative 3 exponent on the outside. Now, deal with the outer exponent. Now that you've done everything on the inside, deal with the outer. So we do what? Since the outer exponent is negative, we flip it. We get what? 6, a to the 8th, b to the 6th, all this over what? 1. 
and the negative exponent changes to what? Negative exponent changes to positive on the outside. So notice when we flip it, nothing changes. Now my question is, is it necessary to write, is it necessary to write one over? Yes, but is it, is it necessary to write everything over one? No. Remember that five over one is just five. So we don't have to write everything over one. We can just write this as what? We can write this as six, a to the eighth, b to the sixth, all this to the what? Third power. Now, we cube everything inside. This is not 6 times 3 giving 18. Rather, what does 6 to the third power mean? It means 6 times 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6 is 216. Very big number. A to the 8th cubed, what are we doing with the exponents? We are multiplying. Remember, power of power, we multiply. 3 times 8 gives A to the 24th. And 6 times 3, B to the 6th to the third power, multiply, we get B to the what? 18th power. So this is your final answer. All right, that concludes this video.